I wonder if you've ever thought about who you might like to be if you weren't yourself. Given the choice of anybody in the world, alive or no longer alive, who would you choose? I wonder what would help you in your choosing. Perhaps it would be somebody who's very wealthy. Perhaps you'd like uh, to have a lot of money. I've just been doing a bit of research uh, today. I've discovered, I'm sure you already know this, that the most wealthy man in the world is Jeff Bezos. If you don't know who he is, you will certainly know his company. It's called Amazon. An international company. One of the few companies that has done incredibly well during the pandemic. And we're all using it a lot of the time, aren't we? Jeff Bezos is worth $110 billion. $110 billion. Just think about how much money that is and what good you could do in the world with that much money. Do you know, if you just put that money in the bank, you wouldn't be able to spend it as fast as it gathered interest. Even if you were spending it like water, it would still grow as a fortune. It's so big, do you know Steve Bezos is worth as much as the GDP of Morocco. Absolute incredible wealth. And the second most wealthy person in the world is not doing too badly himself. Bill Gates, you all know who he is, who he is founder of uh, Microsoft. He's worth just under 100 billion. The third most wealthy person in the world, well, it might be him that you'd uh, like to be a bit more. His name is Mark Zuckerberg. And uh, at the age of 35, he's worth uh, 50, 60 billion. That's quite an achievement. He started off and runs Facebook, which is one of the biggest top, uh, the, the big top three tech companies in the world. Would it be somebody who's very wealthy that you'd like to be one of these people? Perhaps wealth, money in the bank doesn't really do it for you. Maybe you'd like to be somebody who's got real power so that you could really change things. It's said that the most powerful person in the world is uh, the President of the United States. I'm not really sure I'd like to be him. But some people would. And there's no doubting it's a hugely powerful position. Away from politics, maybe you'd just simply rather be a great business leader that uh, 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 runs companies that have lots of people doing your bidding all the time. Or perhaps some great military leader like uh, Winston Churchill, who uh, is credited with saving this country from the threat of the Nazis in the Second World War. And I say credited, but not without cause. He was a great military leader. Maybe wealth and power doesn't do it for you. Maybe you're much uh, more a touchy-feely type and uh, you would like to be somebody who is simply good. Somebody like Martin Luther King who made things better for so many people in the United States of America. Or maybe Mother Teresa, who gave her life to care for other people. She's uh, somebody to aspire to, even though she had, had no wealth. She had quite a lot of power because people took her seriously. But she was a good person. Or perhaps the best person in many ways. Uh, forgive me for suggesting this, but to my mind, it has to be Queen Elizabeth II. What a wonderful queen she has been. Selfless, uh, strong, uh, and just a really great leader for this nation. Perhaps you'd like to be her. 
So what is it that shapes your thinking when you're asked a question like that? Is it something about me? I'd like that because I'd have lots of money, I can have what I want. Is it perhaps something that means I, I can help other people? I don't know. Do you know, we're told today, work hard and you can have it all. Work hard at school, get good grades in your GCSEs and your A-levels, go and get a good degree, and you can have it all. The world is there for your taking. Is that true? I'm not so sure. In our Bible passage this morning, we come to look at another man who encountered Jesus. And uh, this man was a man who had everything, seemingly. He certainly had power and control. Verse 18 of chapter 18. And a ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He had power. He was a ruler. That means people did what he wanted them to do. He had control, just like some of the people we might aspire to be. But not only did he have power, he also had wealth. Look at verse 23. When he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Power, wealth, well, there's two things together. He had good health, because he was able to come to Jesus himself. And he clearly had good character. Verse 21 tells us, All these I have kept from my youth. He had good character. He had tried to work hard to do the right things. He had tried to follow God's law. He had power, wealth, health, character. Boy, this guy had everything going for him, didn't he? Would you like to be like him? Would I? Except he knew that there was something missing. He had everything going for him, but he knew there was just something extra. And so he came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? There's a sense in his words there, isn't there, that he's tried everything and uh, he thought, well, I've, I've looked everywhere I can think of. I've done all I can think of. I'll go and ask Jesus if he can help me. Jesus, what must I do? I can't seem to fill this chasm, this gap that's there. He had a restless heart before God. He knew there was something more and he had not understood how to get it. He thought he could buy anything. He had power and authority and all that stuff. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answers rather surprisingly. He says, keep God's law. Look at verse 20. You know the commandments, says Jesus. Do not commit adultery, do not, bear, uh, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honour your father and mother. Do God's law. Keep God's law, says Jesus. But interestingly, Jesus doesn't quote all ten of the commandments. Was it just that he didn't have time, or that it was just a little bit of shorthand? Well, I don't think so. Because the five commandments that Jesus quotes here 
are all commandments to do with relationships with other people. Did you spot that? Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honour your father and mother. They're all to do with relationships with other people. The laws relating to others. Maybe Jesus saw into this man's heart that he was not quite so squeaky clean after all. Jesus answered him and he said, verse 22, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. That was just a little bit too much for this man. When he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Now, we're left here with a, a very important question. And it's this. Is it possible for a rich person to get to heaven? For a rich person to be right with God? Look at what Jesus says in verse 24. Jesus, seeing that he'd become sad, said, How difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus doesn't say it's impossible. It just says it's difficult. But it's very difficult. Because Jesus goes on to say, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. That would be quite a feat, wouldn't it? For a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. So why is it difficult for a rich person to be right with God. Why is it especially difficult for this man who is a ruler, who has health and good character and plenty of money, why is it so difficult for him to be right with God? The reason is quite simple and it's this. The things of this world hold us back from the things of God. And if we put all our investment in health and wealth and achievement in this world, well, we're jeopardizing our future eternity. See, when we have wealth, we spend more time worrying about losing it than anything else. Jesus says, rich man, wealthy man, get your priorities right. Put God first. Jesus says this rich man has to do two things. He has to sell all he's got and give it to the poor. And he has to follow Jesus two things. Sell what you've got so that it doesn't continue to hold you back, to cling on to you and you cling on to it. Get rid of it and then follow Jesus. That's a big challenge, this uh, encounter with Jesus. And it's a big challenge because we in the UK, in the West, in the 21st century, we are all wealthy. Particularly those of us who happen to live in uh, leafy suburbs like Barton Seagrave. We're all wealthy compared to the average wealth in the world. Remember Jesus said, it's hard for rich people to get into the kingdom of God. Do you ever wonder 
why as the wealth in this country increases, the godliness of people decreases? Here's the answer. It's a challenge for all of us because there isn't a single one of us who doesn't need to take stock of what we have and what our priorities are. But what are your priorities? To follow God? Some years ago, I went uh, on a trip to Greece to stay in a monastery. Uh, it was uh, quite a thing, out of character, out of my comfort zone. But uh, in that monastery, there was uh, an old man. And uh, he spoke to my friend and me. And he said to me, look, I've got absolutely nothing except the clothes that you see me standing in. But I am the richest man in the world because I have Jesus. Oh, that that was the priority for more of us. Let's pray. God our Father, we thank you for the challenge of this Bible passage. We ask that you would help us to get our priorities right before you. To put you first in all things. For your glory. Amen.